लिव ट्वेंटी सिक्स अब एंटरटेनमेंट कभी भी कहीं भी than before let me introduce you to the guests for this love conference are you ready for that yeah. are you excited for who's coming yeah. all right let's start with the first one the first panelist is a woman who lives her life online with a heart and soul the one and only malini agarwal founder of miss malini entertainment and a social media ninja herself Malini knows the pulse of today's Indian youth and is here to talk about how and what love means today on the digital world. Please welcome Malini Agarwal. You look beautiful. Thank you. All right, the second guest today, our next panelist is Unfiltered. she is spontaneous and she is dynamic recently she got married and that was a national surprise it was so much a surprise that when she put up her instagram post saying that hey i'm married she got 600 text messages on her phone saying what the f and not congratulations please welcome neha dhupia <laughs> <laughs> All right, are we ready for our next guest? Yes. 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 That's how I like it. Is he so hardcore? Uh, actually, he's not hardcore. It's actually no secret that this man breeds romance. You know, he has the ability to make you in fall in love over and over again. He is the rock star who clearly understands love from the times of Leila Majnu to the love आजकल प्लीज वेलकम इम्तियाज अली द नेक्स्ट गेस्ट डे ही इज इन द जुअल सेंस अ रोडी हु लाइक्स टू बी अनकन्वेंशनल But his love story is rather a classic one. Now, did you guys know about that? He met his uh, wife at a friend's party. Flames ignited between these two sober party lovers, and then began their love saga. Welcome, Ranveer. <laughs> but i'll give you some hints though i don't need to but let me start by saying that he's a director he's an actor he's a producer he's fashion police he's the best pouter and recently he also became a fortune cookie writer he is industry's three am friend just keep pass aakar hota hai har problem ka the end please welcome india's most loved radio host the winner of indian radio forum awards 2018 Karan Johar Shabaram to Tarata Shabaram to Tarata Get the heck crazy I'll get you to show the heck Let the heck wish you kill to get you to get you to get you to get you Right here, but excuse me for making you stand up again, so that we can have a quick photo op for the media here. Oops. Yeah, yeah, come. Can we come a little bit closer? Fine, right. Yes, sir. Like five hundred of the same. Yeah, do a calling thing. We should be like calling. Oh yeah, calling. We should be like. Yeah. We're calling you. Who you okay, I don't know. You don't know. You you can't do it. You can't do it. We're calling you. Ah, uh, I'm here. Ah, yeah. come on. Awesome. Thank you. In 
<laughs> Guys, we'll have more opportunity. Fantastic. We, he will. Yes, yes. Okay. All right. All right. Fantastic. Let's do that. So no doubt. Carlo. Man, go forward. <laughs> Wow. What a friend, otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> you want your shoes. Those are great shoes. Jute Kincho. All right. Thank you so much, guys. Time to now begin the love conference. And can I please have Malini Agarwal to take over the session? Thank you so off. much. Thank you. You've been wonderful. I can't believe we're here on stage hosting a love conference. And I love it because they're two of my favorite things, radio and love. So I'm really excited to be here to talk to all of you. And hopefully you're going to tell me a few secrets, as uh, Karan has probably got some out of you in the past as well. So this is season two coming up of Calling Karan, which is very exciting because I think you've pretty much now covered the gamut of things to do in life, right? <laughs> Now this is like radio is like the next level and it's the theater of the mind really. So tell us a little bit about what made you do it. Um, what made me do radio? Uh, I just feel like I should do everything. Yeah. Uh, and I think I'm pretty available at most given points of time. Uh, being accessible and affable is part of my personality. And I just felt that radio would have a tremendous reach. And I do it for free anyway, giving people love advice. When you're single for that long in your life, you tend to kind of meet troubled couples all the time. Yeah. Uh, husbands, wives, boyfriends, girlfriends, boyfriends and boyfriends, girlfriends and girlfriends. And I think that I invariably land up giving copious amounts of advice. So I thought, why not get paid for it? I love that. <laughs> Can we give him a round of applause for that? Now, it's one thing to make movies about love, right? And it's another thing to experience love. But giving someone advice is a great responsibility. It is. Right? And in fact, we have a disclaimer right at the beginning that I'm not a professionally trained individual like a therapist or a psychiatrist or mm. you know, somebody. So my advice should be taken at just at that level, knowing that I may be uh, just giving you advice on a personal level and I'm not authorized to give yeah. you that advice. Having said that, when I give the advice, I don't pretend like I'm not authorized. Yeah. Because you I give very, great. very sincere advice and yeah. I've broken a few relationships. Yeah. Oh no, really? <laughs> but it was meant to be. But do you ever give advice that came from your movies? Like there was a, a moment and do you ever reference them and say, this movie may just have worked? No, no, no. What, what we show in the movies is ridiculous. Are you, mad? <laughs> you can't, you can't, <laughs> you can't, <laughs> you can't. <laughs> You can't possibly ruin people's lives by giving those kind of situations. Uh, those are meant for like PVR, uh, but uh, not for people like when you give legit advice, you have to kind of really get into the center of the situation and then, you know, be very, and I take it very seriously. I take every call very seriously. I really get into it. That's really important. And now we have a love conference and today's love conference is an opportunity for everyone to actually get to know the people on the stage and really delve deep into their hearts. So Neha, I want to know what is the worst piece of advice, of love advice that you were ever given? From Karan or otherwise? From Karan? No, in general. Uh, no, Karan, I, I have to say that uh, I, I remember calling Karan in season one and uh, asking him this question that uh, Karan, audio, I have... Audio, audio, audio. Check, 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 audio. You've got to just uh, put it up again. No, it's fine now, I think. Can you hear me? Guys, can you hear me? Okay, great. Um, so I remember calling him in season one and asking him that uh, my question was that um, should I go with a hot guy or should I go with an intelligent guy? And Karan was like, what a stupid question, go with a hot guy. <laughs> yeah, what are you going to... And then it's, what happened? Listen, it's intelligent to go with the hot guy. Okay. Very rarely Neha's not heard. Hand mic de do isko Can you guys hear me? No. Now can you hear me? Oh yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Now Juhu can hear you. <laughs> and 
then uh, when I was uh, about to get married, the only person I think who knew apart from my parents was Karan. And I, was, I still remember I was like lying in his bedroom like that, like a lash, and I was like, Karan, what should I do? And he was like, just get married. What's the big deal? And I was like, can you simplify this for me? And he said the most beautiful thing. I know, you know, he comes with this humor and all of that, but deep down, he's a hardcore romantic. As much as he doesn't like to admit it, he is. He likes the idea of it. And he said that, you know, just treat this like the intermission of your life, like a movie is. And more often than not, the second half is usually better. And that was the best advice he's given me till date, or anybody has given me on love. I believe, like you said, that you asked him whether you should go for someone who's intelligent or good looking. Now, recently, you got married. And I think Angad asked you, now, who am I considering you? You gave her this advice. So, what did you say? You're going to be talking about masks. Well, I'll just say Angad is good looking. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't an either or, but he is good looking. He is good looking. <laughs> And there's a dot, dot, dot. The rest of it you can hear on the next He married season. Neha. I mean, do you think I should think he's intelligent? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought, I thought he's going to say that he doesn't have to worry about anything because the intelligence department is taken care of by me. Exactly, but that's what I meant. I didn't know that it was going to be such I, a big I mean, insult. This isn't marriage all about balancing things. So you bring in the intelligence, he brings in the good looks. No, that's fine. I mean, <laughs> we'll give both to him. <laughs> I love that. Okay, now this is your opportunity before we get further, deeper into the love conference, to ask Karan for a piece of love advice. From me? Yes. Intyaz is a master of love. <laughs> I mean, wow. he's somebody who can give advice. If you were to ask Karan something. There are so many things. There are so many things I'd like to ask Karan about love. And uh, some of them are so filmy and mushy that I'd rather just like in the middle Go of the night Go for it. You know me. this audience will love it. <laughs> um, What's the relationship, Karan, this is a, like a DNM, okay? Uh -huh. What's the relationship between self-love and love for someone else? Oh, what's the relationship between self-love and love for someone else? Do you have to be in love with yourself or not in love with yourself to be a better lover? Let's put it that way. Oh, that is deep, Imtiaz. Uh, I think that, to put it simply, I can only talk about myself, is that I'm not somebody who ha who's full of self-love. In fact, I have a lot of self-doubt, I have a lot of apprehensions about myself. In fact, I'm, I have low self-esteem issues when it comes to me in a relationship. Uh, that's why I think I tend to give much more to a relationship and invariably land up in a one-sided one because I have too much to offer. I think people who are full of themselves and not full of themselves would be a negative connotation, but who genuinely love themselves and sometimes with good and bad reason, I think they are incapable of extreme love because somewhere love is a selfless emotion. You know, it cannot come with the baggage of your own self-love because then even when you love someone, you're so happy with yourself that you're loving someone that, that you carry that feeling into the relationship and it's all about you. And I think a true relationship has to be about us and you, not just me. You know, it has to be about like two people. Awesome. Amazing. I love that. In fact, that's what I've heard as well. Like love isn't what you feel about someone else. It's what they make you feel about yourself. And there are two differences, like loving yourself and being obsessive about yourself, there also is a difference, you know? You could like yourself, love yourself is fine, but if you're obsessively like all about you, like if you're like deeply a megalomaniac or obsessive about yourself, it's very difficult for you to contribute into a relationship. Then you have to call Karan. Then you have to call me. <laughs> I, want to, I want to ask him another question. Mm -hmm. He just said that in the relationship that, um, in the marriage of Angad and Neha, he's the good looking one. Right. What are you oh. saying about Neha then? Well, there's a difference between good looking and super sexy, right? <laughs> like, he's good looking. Look at that. And she's super what sexy. What is yeah. Well, Neha has immense amount of sex appeal. I think that she does. She's tremendously hot. And from the time that I first met her to the time now, her intelligence is also a turn on. But also, I think her voice and her, her, her curves that are invariably covered by tapestry. But uh, she I has knew this wasn't going to end well. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you're hot, Nia. You have to know that. Thank you, Karan. You have to own it, which you do quite I'm, a lot. I'm shaking right now because I know this is... Are you done? I'm this done. is turning into a what? other show, huh, by the yeah, way. I that know. was a real compliment. Please, just, just clap. <laughs> just clap. <laughs> well, I always ask Neha because she's so gorgeous and stunning why she wears, like, bed sheets, always. Wow. Like, I, I want to know why she's always bed, bath, and beyond. She wants people to imagine stuff. Yeah, I suppose. Mm. Okay, we have to move on I to like Ranvijay now. As I cover up a little more. <laughs> <laughs> 
So Ranvijay, your uh, Instagram is just adorable to follow. Now everyone would think of Ranvijay as this really macho, just like out there, roughing it out. But his Instagram is filled with the most adorable pictures of him and his wife. Yeah. And even their story, I think you met where none of both of you That's were not. That's my wife you. posting for me, by the way. <laughs> She's got your pass. I believe you met when you were both at a party and neither of you were drinking, and that's how you connected. Yep. So, so how you know how does someone like you, who's really like got all these girls running after him, find that one and have this beautifully cute relationship? Because that's what all girls are looking for. I'm from Punjab. Um, and uh, we've been brainwashed since we were young that if a girl's from London, you say yes. <laughs> um, she's actually somebody who didn't know what I did. So in your question, you had a part where you said girls running behind you. After about 10, 12 years of being, uh, doing what I do, I didn't know the agenda of women. I didn't know why they liked me. Was it my humor? Was it uh, my chivalry? What, what was it? Because I didn't even need to do anything at times. And, it's true. <laughs> Modest. And, and then, then there, was, there was a time when I met this girl who uh, didn't know what I did mm. and started liking me for that present between the two of us, right? And over a period of uh, months, she liked me for a while.